Hi, this is Maria. I'm a demonstrator in Ontario, Canada. And boy, am I inspired. I just came from, or should I say, participated in the On Stage at Home with Stampin' Up. And you see in front of you a stamp set that I got, uh, and we did some make and takes with those. And today I thought, why not show you a card that I made with it? Not one card, five cards. But I'm going to make one of them with you uh, in this video. So the supplies that I'm using, it's the Blessings of Home stamp set, which is a rubber stamp. It has dies. Um, I probably will not be using these dies for this card, but I have for other cards for the other cards. I'll be using the denim ribbon that comes with the uh, the bundle uh, and some classic matte dots. I'll be using those as well. And in addition, I'm going to use some stitched uh, circles and layering circle dies. All right. Now, as you can see, these are images that need to be colored. Well, you don't need to, but I like to color. Some people don't, but I like to color. And I'm going to show you how to color using a blender pen. And this, what? Yes, that. Okay, well, not just that, but I'm going to put something on it. Anyway, oh, well, what's the card you're going to make? Oh, all right. I guess I better show you that. This one. And you say, oh, well, I think there's something I forgot to show you. The designer paper. I'm going to show you the pattern side first. As you can see, the colors are pale papaya, garden green, and fresh freesia. And another color is, um, we don't see it yet, cinnamon cider. And here's the one that I made the card with. And on the other side, they're all different wood grain patterns. And okay, one an accent color tends to be midnight, sorry, misty moonlight. I want to call it Midnight Muse, but that color retired a while ago. So you can see there are different types of wood grain. There's broad planks, there's narrow planks, they're at a diagonal. And I've had a, quite a bit of fun using those as backgrounds. All right, so you can see this is the designer paper. This is the pattern. By itself, perhaps I wasn't that fussy with it, but um, I quite like it in the panels. Okay, let's get together. Let's get going. I'll bring out my supplies. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a bit late in the evening. So <clears throat> I'm using... I'm using a Misty Moonlight, <clears throat> my goodness, card base, which is four and, a four and a quarter by eight and a half, and it's scored to form it a top fold A2 card. And layering on that is a piece of the designer paper that has that wood grain pattern, and it's four by five and a quarter. That's going to go on there. And then, as you can see, there's three panels. And what I did was I cut one piece and then I cut it in three, three pieces of one and three eighths by three and a quarter. So, and then it, that's matted with the uh, misty moonlight as well. And by cutting it in from one piece, you can actually match it up like a little puzzle. You can see how the patterns match up here. Perfect. Okay, so then I'm going to add that. I'll add that to the card front, but let's add. Then you're going to have a little piece of, um, and I'm using the shimmer white. Um, I'm going to stamp the sentiment on that and then put that slightly under the ribbon. Now this, you say, this looks a little bit different, and I'm going to show you how to do that. That's how to, to die cut an image that extends over the end of your die cut. I can't remember the name of it now, but I'll show you how to do it. Okay, let's just put a little bit of this card together. I'll get out my Tombow. And 
And this is just the other side of this uh, patterned paper. It's almost like a Baroque pattern. And now I've already done two of them and I'll just adhere this third one to get on here on the mat. And then I'm going to add these to the card front. And what I do is I'll add, I'll just lay them out like this. And those of you who do scrapbooking, uh, this is a technique that I copied from you. Is that you take a pencil, you lay them all out, and you take a pencil and you make a little mark, the corner here, and the bottom corner. And at this end and here and you can for the middle as well and then when you I start with the middle and we've got the little mark here I know that I have to lay it there because there's nothing worse than if you're putting three panels on a card and you have them all at one end I've done that before. They're, in other words, they're not centered. Make sure that you keep the right amount of space between them as well. There we go. And when I get my proper rubber, I will erase these little marks. I don't want to use this because it'll leave a black smudge. Okay, now to show you how to do this sentiment. All right, now I have a couple of them stamped. Okay, where did they go? You ever go to make something and then you can't find it? Ah, uh, yes, that's happened a number of times. So I have a piece of, this is shimmer white as well, and I'm going to take my image, my stamped image, and the one that I'm using is this one. And I'm going to stamp, oh, I should show you my color palette for this card. I'm using, I'm stamping with basic gray, and then I'm going to color with pale papaya, fresh freesia, with a bit of misty moonlight, and garden green. I'm going to stamp with basic gray. I find it just a little bit softer than black memento. There we go. And we'll just let that dry for just a sec. And while that is drying, yes, I'm bringing this back out again. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pale papaya. And I'm going to put... A little bit on the end. I'm using that as my paint palette. And I'll put fresh freesia on there as well. Because I'll be doing both of them pretty well at the same time. There. And I'll bring out my blender pen. Now I will just color a bit of those flowers. And then I'll show you one that I've already completed. Okay, now a blender pen just has a little bit of a solution in here that allows you to paint with it. And you can use ink, you can use re-inker, you can use the chalks, you can use your markers. Do a video and you can guarantee there's going to be a phone call, so sorry about that. Okay, so I'm going to take some pale papaya, just pick it up with a blender pen, and I'm going to put it in the, in the center of the flower. No fuss, you don't need to fuss. You're not being an artist. You're just applying a little bit of color to the centers of the flowers. Now I have a paper towel with me. You can just use a piece of copy paper as well, but to clean it and change colors, you just wipe your blender pen and it's clean for the next color. So now I'm taking some fresh freesia I 
I'll just do a couple of the petals here just to give you the idea. A little bit of the smaller flower. Then when that's dry, you just take some more fresh freesia and just darker, make it darker in the center near the flower. Okay, near the center. Clean your blender pen again. And at this point, you can either get another block or you can just clean this one. And I'm going to bring in Misty Moonlight. And you say, well, where do you put that on the flower? Well, you'll see. Just a little bit of Misty Moonlight and Garden Green. Maybe a little bit more there. Okay. Get them out of the way. Now what I do with the Misty Moonlight, I just take a little bit and just a little bit around the center of the flower and just gently see how that it really pops out the uh, center of the flower. Or you can also carry it a little bit into the, into the petals if you want. So again, just a little bit around the center and pull it into the flower. Okay, now the leaves. See how easy it is to color with the blender pen? It's probably my, my favorite. Other than the, uh, the, uh, pa the paint brush, I like that as well. See, I'm not fussing. I go over the line so it doesn't matter. Then when it's dry a little bit, again, just apply a little bit more just to darken it and you have shadows. So this is my flower that is pretty well complete as much as I want to do it because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my circle die and I'm going to die cut it. But I want to die cut it so that I don't want to cut these little flowers off. So there is a technique and I can't for the life of me remember what it is. But what I do is I hold this over the flower and then with a pencil, I'll just make a little mark right here and a little mark right there. And then I'll take my scissors And I know I can probably cut this off. And I end up, what I do is I will cut along, fussy cut anything below those marks. I'll just do a little bit to start. You'll get the idea in a minute. I'll fussy cut some more but what you end up doing okay that's not far enough because what I want is the the uh, die to go above that leaf so I will do this And I will, I will die cut that. And what I'm left with, so I want, I'll cut all of that out. And what I'm left with is this. And I will just go and die cut that. And then I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So this is what it looks like after I have die cut it. That's what I did again, just to review. I have tucked the die underneath the area that I want to left overlap and there we go now another thing that I have that I have done and I use my uh, misty moonlight marker for that if you'll notice in the designer paper do you see the little dots along the outside of that and I thought well why not use my marker and just do little dots along the top of the image. There, 
and that makes it look like it belongs. Okay, I'll just move this out of the way. And now we can put the rest of the card together. So we have, we will add this to this with dimensionals. But before we do that, I want to add the ribbon to the uh, front of the card. So approximately here. There's that card here. Okay, and what I've done is I've put some tape on the back of this. Sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. Usually I put it on the card itself. Here it comes. Okay. Just trim off the excess. Make sure this is the right way up. They had an interesting little skit on um, the on stage. It was called the Master Stamper. And one of the contestants, so-called contestants, was making a card. And the reason she, she didn't win the challenge was that she completed her card upside down. Uh, we all, we are all afraid of doing that at times, aren't we? Okay, now I'll find my dimensionals. Here they are. dimensionals. I don't want to press it down too hard because I want to stamp the uh, sentiment. Here's my little piece here. Here it is. It's a little strip, three eighths of an inch. And I'm going to use Midnight Muse. Midnight Muse, here I go. It's retired, Maria, it's retired. It's Misty Moonlight. Now, sometimes when you put the smaller stamps, you put them on the block and they're, and they're crooked, the thing to do is to just lay them down like that and then pick them up with your stamp and block. Ooh, perfect. Okay. Now, I'm going to use dimensionals for that as well. I didn't bring my little ones out, but along the edge, I can use those. So this little piece is about three eighths of an inch, about three and a half inches long. to just, it goes by dimensional. Well, it's still there. There we go. There we go. Have a perfect birthday. Now to finish the card off, I have these lovely little classic matte dots, and I think I'll just put um, some basic gray ones, and I'll use my pick tool. There's a little putty at the end, and 
I'll pick up my embellishment with that. There we go. Now, I have some cardstock for the inside as well. A piece of basic white. And I have a piece of designer paper that I like to put in as well. And some matching cardstock. And I'll take a little strip of the misty moonlight. That just ties everything together. And then what I'll do is one of my practice flowers, I will fussy cut it out and put it on the inside. Now there's some overlapping here. I'll just trim that off and add it to the inside. And there's my card. Like I said, this is a stamp set from um, On Stage at Home. Now these were not the, the projects that were part of the, um, the uh, uh, On Stage. Oh, I put a little bit of Wink of Stella on the center of the, on the flower. These are my own designs. There we go. And there is my sample and the card that was just made. Now, let me show you some other cards that I made with the same stamp set, some of the dies, as well as some, some of the other designer paper. Now here's one that is a, a different designer paper. And um, then I use the little dies and little flowers here. And here is another one, the cinnamon cider. And I colored it this time with the uh, blending, uh, the blender pens. So I did that. And I sponged the background with a little bit of cinnamon cider. And this one is my most fussy one, um, most ornate one. And uh, I did that, this with um, an aqua painter. And then finally, with just pretty well the dies with just the sentiment in the center. So there you go. The card we did, some other sample cards from the Blessings of home stamp set, die, and designer paper. And thank you so much for watching. Uh, for more information, go to my blog. The, um, the link for which will be down below. And uh, you can buy any of these supplies through my online store. Again, the link will be below. And thank you so much for watching. Have a good evening.